guys. So it's Monday. It's a uh, provincial holiday here in uh, Ontario, and uh, I'm taking advantage of it. Uh, left to my own devices, I'm not too well motivated. It's about 12.30 and I'm just coming out now to the shop. I'm looking at how dirty the camera lens is on my camera. It's all just full of dust. Well, I hope it doesn't show up too bad on here. In any case, it's a lovely day today. Just blue sky everywhere. And it's only about, oh, I don't know, 21 Celsius or just under 70. But it's a very pleasant day. So I'm going to go in the workshop, get some stuff done. I was uh, on mobile last night, but I didn't really say much. I was just listening. And uh, one of the things that resonated with me was, uh, was uh, Gary Turbo Coper was saying uh, something about uh, uh, Diet Coke, about how it tricks your body into storing sugars. And I've been fighting with losing weight for a couple of years now. And... Uh, at one point, I was running 26 miles a week. Now I'm down to about 14 miles a week, and I still am, can't get below 200 pounds. And uh, I drink a lot of Diet Coke, so I'm going to lay off it for a while and just drink some uh, some water. We'll see how that goes. Anyways, let's go in the shop and we'll do some real work here. Nobody can say that the shop isn't fraught with danger. <laughs> Not just to me. Okay. Well, I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do today. I finished off that harness, um, the front harness, or at least mostly finished off. Like I said, I still have to locate that uh, brake cable, or not the brake cable, the brake uh, warning wire. Um, I noticed something yesterday when I was kind of trying to determine how far I wanted the wires to come out. I brought the bumper uh, down from upstairs. Now this is a new repro bumper. And uh, this is just EDP on here, so it's going to have to be stripped and painted at some point. But uh, I noticed something when I fit it up to the uh, frame rails here. The bolt holes here and here didn't match up very well to this. So I'm going to find some bolts and see if they actually will bolt up. Uh, from what I saw, uh, the frame rails are too far apart. And uh, somebody had reamed on the frame a little bit. This isn't the original cross member. This is another one I had from a salvage truck, and uh, and because uh, somebody had done what people always do, which is they wrap a rope around it when they get stuck, and they yanked on that. And of course, you just bend it like a pretzel. So I am going to have to see if I'm going to have to pull this together with the porta power, and uh, and work with it that way. Might explain why some of the I had some trouble fitting up the uh, the uh, uh, getting the alignment done right, but uh, we'll uh, we'll sort that out in a bit. I don't know if I'll do that today or not. We'll see. Uh, what I was actually thinking about doing was just doing a quick test run of the uh, harness here, connecting up the lights and uh, seeing what happens. Because the old dude said, you know, you ain't a, you're not a genius until. Uh, until uh, everything either lights up or works. So I'm going to make some things light up today, I think, just for the hell of it. Anyway, I'll get to that. Okay, I'm all over the place today. So I checked out this bumper, and I checked the spacing of these frame rails against the truck I got behind the shop here. And, uh, and the spacing of the frame rails is about three-quarter of an inch too wide, so I'll pull it together with the porta power when I get around to it. No point in doing it until the bumper is, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about it right now, but let's just say that. Also, I was mucking around with this stuff. Just turned those around because I wasn't getting enough thread bite with them. It's a little bit knackered there, but such as it is. Yeah, that one looks a little better. That might want to just be off a bit, but I turned them around because I wasn't getting thread bite. Or if I, when I did get thread bite, it was when the headlight was aimed off that way because I had to tighten them so tight. Um, also, I spent a whole bunch of time searching for my uh, bezels, or my rings, for the headlights here. And I realized that these ones are, that one's all banged up and it's missing a, a tab. That one is probably usable, but I knew I had another set on the Suburban in the 
you know, on the, well, you can't see it, but in the container. So I went and I polished one up, and it looks, you know, pretty damn good. You know, just a little bit more, I might do a little bit more polishing nonetheless, but, uh, but this one, the, uh, when I unbolted it, this broke off, so I'm gonna go and take that back on, and, uh, and see how it goes. That's pretty fine stuff. I think these are stainless steel, but I'm not sure, but I'm gonna just try and do a tack without any uh, filler, because I don't have any stainless steel rod. Actually, the, the telling factor would be, is this magnetic? If it's magnetic, then it's chromed steel. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> it's chrome steel. That might explain why it looks a little bit rusted. I thought that was just something it pulled off of the, uh, off of the uh, thing there. Well, regardless. Okay, well, I'm going to take this back on, buff this one, and then put the lights in for no good reason. There you go. Tack deck in. Not the neatest job, but I think it's solid. Uh, boy, this stuff is so thin, it's so hard not to blow through. Like, I melted through a bit. I know it got penetration, that's for sure. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. It's a little crooked, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. I can bend it a bit. Okay, so I'm going to polish this one. That one, I might give another touch. Then I'll do this one again, I suppose. And uh, then I'm going to put the bulbs in, and uh, I don't know what I'll do next. There you go, bulbs are in. Bezels are all shiny and polished. I guess I gotta take some, I'll put, put fingerprints all over it, but nevertheless. So that's on. You don't see most of it. Most of it's hidden by the front bezel. I guess I couldn't have used a little more polishing, but I was a little nervous. I had it snatch it out of my hand at one point and pretty much bent one into a pretzel. And I said, well, if I manage to straighten this out, maybe I shouldn't bother anymore. It's just not worth the trouble. Could hand polish it at some point if it really bothers me. But regardless, so those are in. So I'm just going to do some more random stuff here. doesn't make any sense. That's just me. Okay, I put the turn signal uh, um, lenses in on both sides. This is, like I said, random stuff I'm doing. I thought I'd share with you guys a little trick. Uh, I want to put the uh, interior light in, but I need to get a wire from here all the way down to here. And it's pretty simple. Just grab a piece of string, and I don't even think I needed. No, hang on. Okay. So I grab a piece of string, and I tied a piece of paper towel to it, but I don't think I even needed it really. And I just stuff it in this hole and shoot some air in it. I've seen this being done with bikes, so uh, it's probably nothing new to anybody, but I thought just in case it wasn't. Well, it would be handier if it wasn't uh, one-handed here, but... That's yeah, making a little bit there. And we're out the other end. Cool. So I can now use this string to uh, drag that through to here. And then from there, probably route it down the... Uh, the uh, base here. That's where it was uh, in the stock position. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful and I'm going to put this in. Okay, so I put a bunch of the harness in. It's not connected to anything electronic. Uh, computers are all disconnected as well. Uh, I don't know if I showed that. If I didn't, that's the uh, new uh, overhead light. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply power to the system with this battery charger. And there's a couple of reasons for doing this, this way rather than a battery. First of all, the battery can pump out quite a few hundred amps uh, if so there's a dead short. And this charger is supposed to be 10 amps. You're gonna assume that it's gonna, uh, you know, blow a fuse inside of it, anything too much beyond that. So, what I've done as well is I'm going to put a light bulb in series with the power, and if there is a uh, strong current draw, not necessarily, not necessarily a short, that light would light. So I'll use that to check to make sure that I don't have any major problems in my harness before I actually give it any kind of proper amount of power here. So, I got nothing to set this on. I guess I'm going to be grabbing a... I'll try and hold it. We'll see how we go here. Hang on, I'll pause you guys. Okay, so I got this hooked, uh, the uh, 
light bulb hooked in series with the uh, power cable going all the way up to my common power source here. This is all just cobbled together just for a test here. And uh, light's not lighting, so I think we're good here. There's another good reason for not applying, you know, full power instantly is, you know, obviously you don't want to burn up your harness, but if you start popping fusible links, those are a real pain in the ass to replace. So, uh, in any case, I'm just feeling the wire here to make sure it's not feeling warm right there, even though the bulb isn't lighting. doesn't mean there wouldn't be some current flowing. Yeah, it just popped off there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to turn the key to accessory. Now, if the lights were on, that would be enough of a current draw that this light would likely light dimly, and the other lights would light di dimly as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a short. It might just mean that you have something on that's drawing a lot of power. But it's nevertheless, it's a good cautious way to test your system. Okay, first things first, I'll try something uh, fairly low current draw, and we will turn on the overhead light here. Now that's not lighting. That's not lighting either. That may, may or may not be a bad thing. Simply because it may just mean that, that there's enough current flowing. I would expect it to dimly light. So that's probably not a good sign. Okay, well I'm going to work through a few of these tests here. And uh, if you see me come back holding a fire extinguisher, you know I found a problem. Okay, my mistake. It was pretty simple. Uh, I assumed that the ground that was coming through the harness there, where that you see I've got all tied together in just this hodgepodge right here, labeled with ground, uh, was tied into the uh, fuse panel through the harness, but no it's not because I just used my uh, multimeter with the power disconnected on the uh, unit down here. I've got it on my ground, I've got the other end on this ground here, which is you know common for all my cab ground, I'll show it to you in a second. And we're not getting any 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 resistance at all, so it's completely open circuit. If I did this properly, I probably wouldn't have a problem. See, I've got my common ground going right there. That includes uh, coming out of the harness, going to my relay there, and then this one is going to go to ground the column. But I haven't done that yet, so that's why that one's handy enough for me there. So I'm just going to run a wire from here to there and uh, try again. Okay, this is seeming like less and less of a smart idea, but nevertheless, I've got my ground there, my common ground point there for my test, bringing the wire up to there, uh, and uh, I did confirm that I do have continuity. So, if you didn't have a proper connection, we'll try the, uh, the first test with the light bulb all over again, and we'll see how that goes. Give me half a second, I'll sit you guys down. And... I'll try again here. Oh, we're not seeing any light still. So, let's just go and fiddle around a little bit in the cap. Now that's not glowing. Okay, I'm going to try a few other things and pause you guys and I'll come back with the results. Okay, so I found the problem. The problem is I uh, took my multimeter, I grounded it to my common grounding point here, and I'm probing on the um, fuse panel. Let's see if I can get up in here where you can actually see. And I'm checking voltages. And here's a hot all the time spot. And it's only showing 1.1 volts. So I think I've got a bad connection just where I'm feeding my power in, or this thing is very badly broken. Uh, so I'm going to investigate that and I'll, we'll go from there. Okay, as an illustration of just how important every rotten connection is, I have to sandwich those two things between a bolt with two star washers to scratch the surface because they are oxidized enough that they weren't making any conductivity with the uh, gator clip on it. So now, we can have our first bit of success. Whee! And off, on, off, on, off, on. Okay, you get the picture. 
Okay, so now we got that. So that at least tells me that I'm good here. I did check, you know, like before I did everything, I was measuring at the uh, at the uh, fuse panel. I did not redo my test with my bulb, which is bad of me. I should have, because I still could have had a short. But uh, let's try a few other things here. What happens if we pull the marker lights on? Well, that would be the vehicle warning. No great current draw there. We turned on a light here. That's our light for our heater. And if we Okay, okay, we get the picture. And we got one marker light on, and that'll be because I actually, I'm actually surprised that's on. I don't have the ground set up on the front here. You can see these are just hanging free. So I'm not too surprised that they're not lighting. Or the uh, corners here. The backs should be lighting. Oh, are you gonna shut up already? Holy cow. That's interesting. Those must be just about done. Um, that's... Oh, you know why? That's, I guess, the way they do the uh, marker lights. They don't light them all up. I would have expected more than <laughs> three. I think that they are broken. Uh, these aren't lighting, which may be just another ground issue. Let's just see what happens here. Just goes to show you how important the ground is, eh? Okay. Well, let's try something else. Oh, well, that thing shut up. How's about I just disconnect that for a second here? So here's what I figured out in the back. I've got the marker lights on again. This side is working. It's just got a bad connection in the in the socket. It's pretty corroded. Doesn't matter. I'm just using this for illustration purposes because I want to know that the harness is all still intact. Uh, the other bulb, that one there that was on that side originally, wasn't working at all. And this one on this side, I just jig oh, yeah, there we go. Just jiggle it around a bit and it works as well. So my markers are working in the rear. And if I turn everything off, it all goes off obviously. Let's try hitting the brake here and we'll see what we see here. Well there you go. Brake lights are coming on. I got the center mount hooked up even though it's not gonna go on this thing. So we're good there. Turn on the emergency to see what happens. I can hear the, uh, it's a fair current draw for this thing. It's pumping up to about four amps. And just for your reference, you yeah, see that's dimly glowing. It should be glowing a little brighter than that. Just a bad connection or not. Or bad ground, but nevertheless. So we're all flashing here with the emergencies on. Flashing up here, so we're good. And I'm surprised that these are flashing at all because I don't have a good ground. Okay, just it looked like it was bowed out and I thought, oh, Jesus, is it getting that hot already? And it's melting it. But okay, I'll fix up the ground in the front here and we'll better be able to see these flash. See, that's what'll happen is that uh, is that a bad ground doesn't necessarily mean your lights won't work, it just means they won't work well. So let's ground the front and we'll try this again here. Okay, so uh, I think that's all straightened out. I found uh, another bulb for that corner. I pulled it out of a cluster for a Pontiac. <laughs> Anyways, um, lights on on the cab, marker light there, marker light, park light, I guess they'd call it there, park light there. Marker light there, so all that's working and brightly. So I'm glad about that. Go back and we'll play around and we'll put the emergencies on. We're all blinking our back here. I guess it doesn't blink the markers, but Ooh, not happy, is it? I have to put a bigger uh, unit on here. But there you go, it's blinking the markers in the front. And I'll tell you why that uh, that's probably the case here. Is it actually lighting both? No, it actually isn't lighting both, uh, both filaments. Or is it? I can't tell. Probably wrecking uh, my eyesight looking at that bright thing. Nevertheless, 
So that is all confirmed as correctly working. All the marker lights are working. I am a little surprised why the front markers would be lit and the rears aren't, but it may have been just the way the van was set up. Interesting. Okay, let's try something different for a second here. Turn that off. Pop her into reverse. Oh, no, I don't have that switch hooked up, so never mind. <laughs> Idiot. Okay. Well, actually, I can do something else here. Let me pause you for a second. Okay, there's the reverse lights going. I definitely won't be putting that back in. And I made a comment that I edited it out, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so we're doing a little left turn. <laughs> There we go, left turns flashing. Should probably make sure, because you can have other weird effects of a bad ground. You can have lights on the wrong side flashing dimly when you have a bad ground. But that seems to be working okay, and that does seem to be the characteristic of the, that uh, van harness was that it would flash the front marker with the uh, front turn signal. Okay, let's try the other direction. It's flashing a little bit slower. I wonder if we have a problem on this front corner. Yes, we do. And you know why? See, look at that. Dimly glowing in the off, brightly flashing in on, nothing happening here. And I only did that ground. I didn't do the ground that's tucked up in here because I was being lazy and because it seemed to be working. So there you go. Another bad ground issue. So I'll jump across to there and we'll try again. Okay, I, I redid my ground. I've got the ignition in on. I like it this way, turning it on with a screwdriver. Never have to worry about a key. No, that still sounds like that's flashing slow. It's flashing in the back. And no, we're not seeing anything here. We're still seeing dim here. Mm-hmm. Now that might be due to this. So we'll just check this connection a bit. Oh, we're still, I'm looking down at the light and I'm not seeing it change and you can probably hear the ticker not ticking any different. This is a real shamuzzle, isn't it? I'm just kind of delaying doing it properly because I know there's other work that I have to do that the harness will be in the way for. Well, this is going to be an interesting diagnostic uh, test of my skills here. So we'll see. I'm going to pause you guys because I can't really do it with holding the camera. So I'll be back in a second and I'll explain what I found. Well, that ended up being pretty simple. It wasn't a bad ground. It wasn't uh, anything. It was the bulb. It wasn't in the socket all the way. Or, let me move something around. I'm a little worried because it happened when I picked it up. And it might mean I got a bad connection in my cable. So I'm going to just do some... Oh, look at that, eh? The second I tap that bulb. So let's just be careful and we'll just move the bulb itself. Yeah, see, that's not a good sign. Because... That may mean it's in the wire. And I did do some splices to lengthen this. It may mean I got a cold solder joint in here somewhere. Let me poke into the harness here and see if we get work in here. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to just try pulling the bulb out and reinserting it and see what happens here. So i got to kind of tilt you guys away a bit here. Oh, there you go. It might be the bulb. I'll go grab another bulb. Well, it's working now. Maybe the socket, maybe the bulb, maybe a connection. That's the problem here. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. But it all seems to be working for the moment. 
little bit of a lack of confidence now on that corner. But nevertheless, actually this would be a good time to see if the ground might have been a contributing factor as well. So let's just try seeing what happens if we pull this ground. Nope, we're still going good. I don't think it needed that ground. Or it doesn't seem to for this case. Maybe if the markers were on, it would have needed them. Okay, so now what? Well, I think I've tested all lights except the headlights. Headlights will likely draw too much power for this guy. So we'll turn that off. We'll turn the key off and we will see what we can see. Okay, yeah, the uh, charger isn't liking this very much, but we see we've got some light. So I'll hit the high beam here. It appears to be drawing about eight amps, which sounds low actually. So let's hit the dimmer. Oh, it really didn't like that. It's up over 10. <laughs> and we seem to have some light here. Now, it may be a little bit dim because, uh, well, I think we're going to blow this thing up if I play too much with it. But nevertheless, turn that off and that off. So, we all seem to be good so far. All of our lights seem to be working. You know, we can still do this. We could do it at the beginning. I'm going to put the pin switches in next, I think. I don't know if we'll do that tonight or not. I'm not sure how late it is. He was going to do a homemade pizza, so... So it's nice to get that fresh off of the uh, pizza stone. We are 7.24. Okay. So, I'm getting close to doggy bed time. And I think that's it for the lights there. I might try one more thing. Oh, here, I'll show you one thing. And a sec. Let me just put you down. We'll turn the key to on. And... Missed. So the wiper's working. There we go. And that guy seems to be packing a bit of a sulk there. And I bet I know why. Because it's not an error. Daytime running lights. The van had them. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep them, but it's just a simple thing to disconnect them if I decide to leave them there. But it is a safety feature, and believe me, I do believe they work. So, we'll try one more thing, just for the fun of it, and that's it, because I bet this is getting really long. Okay, so we're going to try something else here. Ooh. So we'll turn the key to accessory. And look at that, eh? Turned on. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> my antenna connector doesn't fit into the back of this radio, so I can't really do much. There we go. I don't think YouTube will uh, block the video with a little bit of static, but nevertheless. So, that works. Other than connecting up the dash. There's probably not a lot else I can test right at this moment. But for the most part, you know, apart from those few little snags related to grounds and bulbs not in there, burned out bulbs and that sort of thing, um, I think we're okay so far. I don't have the horn hooked up. Nor is the column grounded, so it probably wouldn't have worked anyways. Um, so I think we're good to go here. Or at least we're good so far as we can be. I'll put that back. Oh no, I never did take put it into reverse. Never mind. Um, so I think that's it for today. Hopefully this wasn't too long and boring, but I was playing around a bit here, just wanting to see what was going on. And there was no real excuse for hooking all this stuff up. Just a test that it is a big schmuzzle because of it. But uh, nevertheless, it was satisfying to see. You know, some signs of life from this vehicle right now. So, I think that's it for today. This isn't hooked up, so I can't really test it. But, uh, I think that's it.
Anyways, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. There's some sleepy cat uh, video here. <laughs> Later, guys. Oh, just a quick after note here or afterthought. Um, when you buy or if you buy yourself a multimeter, make sure you get one with audible continuity. This one does not have audible continuity, whereas this uh, yellow one does. And that's the uh, beep sound for it that I, uh, I probably mentioned uh, before. You've heard me when I've been ringing out something. It's way harder to have the audible thing than to have to look at the uh, screen every time you want to check to see if you've got continuity. In any case, that really is it. I hate her, guys. Okay, so I know I said I was nearly done, or I really was done, or something like that, but you gotta understand that. I just yap on sometimes. Okay, so Neil had af or had, was doing some uh, plastic brake line clips and it didn't look like they held very well in this frame. And it's a shame that they don't make a version of these wire uh, clips that were like that, because what these ones have is they have this kind of a herringbone pattern on them, and they hold really, really well. Now, I don't know how satisfying they would be to use to clip your brake lines in place, but uh, you could do that and zip tie it to them, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, these hold really well. If you could find some brake line clips that had, you know, plastic brake line clips that had that kind of a pattern on it, that would, that I think you'd be pretty satisfied with. Anyways, that's it. Other than uh, I will probably be using these tomorrow. Set that thing up just to get that out of the way so I don't forget about it. And, uh, and we'll go from there.